Are beautiful upon, upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings glad tidings of peace, bearing good news, announcing salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with Today is the feast of St. Luke the Evangelist. That's why we have Gloria. Um, because we have the Sunday, the solemnities, the feast, obligatory memorial, and the optional memorials are the levels of celebrations of, of our liturgy. We call to mind our sins in the times and ways, wherever, whenever, wherein. We have, been, we have been lacking, perhaps, in our consistency in relation to our efforts to be in union with Christ, meaning truly spending time, conscious, deliberate, intentional, in moments and ways where God is at the center and the most important, in moments and ways when God is just, by the way, or maybe just a footnote, or maybe there's not much in there. And so we say, I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our hard sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. <clears throat> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on our peace the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you. We adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive a prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. Be the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, who chose St. Luke to reveal by his preaching and writings the mystery of your love for the poor, grant that those who already glory in your name may, perse may persevere as one heart and one soul, and that all nations may merit to see your salvation. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. 
beloved, demons, enamored of the present world, deserted me and went to Thessalonica, Crescens to Galicia, and Titus to Damasia. Luke is the only one with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is helpful to me in the ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak I left with Carpus in Troas, the papyrus rose, and especially the parchment. Alexander and Copper Smith did me a great deal of harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. You too be on guard against him, for he has strongly resisted our preaching. At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf, but everyone deserted me. May it not be held against them, but the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the proclamation might be completed and all the Gentiles might hear it. The word of the Lord. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. Let them discourse of the glory of your kingdom and speak of your might. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom, making known to men your might and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is a kingdom for all ages, and your dominion endures through all generations. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. Your friends make known, O Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. We sing the Alleluia together. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord Jesus appointed 72 disciples whom you sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, The harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way, 
Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. Into whatever house you enter, first say peace to this household. <clears throat> if a peaceful person lives there, your peace will rest in him. But if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what he offered or what is offered to you. For the laborer deserves payment. Do not move about from one house to another. Whatever town you enter and they welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick in it and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand. The Gospel of the Lord. Now again, if we give God's Word a chance, not only in terms of reading, but pondering, reflecting, meaning, praying, meditating, contemplating, the Word of God is a bombshell to each one in our soul, in our spirit, in our lives for us to bring us into action. It's the Word of God when we give God's Word a chance that shapes and determines the way we are in our being, in our soul. Thus, the action will be shaped by determined because of the power and the truth of God's Word. Always. For example, such line like um, go on your way, meaning we are being sent. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Is that fair? We are lambs among wolves. The lambs will be eaten by the wolves. No wonder why there will be three reactions in relation to the power and the truth of God's Word. One is, I don't care. I don't care what. I don't care about God's Word. What, what is that? Meaning, it has no meaning in my life. The other one is, so that's very, very, it's more than passive. It's outside my world of meanings. And the other one is, well, okay, I, I read it. And then it just passes through. It looks like the seed planted on hard ground or parts earth. Rocky ground, ground with turns and thistles. Then the other way or the other disposition would be I read God's word, I ponder in it, I pray, I reflect, I meditate, I contemplate. And God's word cuts into my soul and it cuts clean. And I know it. Either I am with God in relation to His Word, or I am not. Behold, or go on your way, 
I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Is that not very, very true? So true that, for example, in today's first reading, we have from the letter of Paul to Timothy, Demas, look at this, enamored of the prison world, enamored, so in love with the world and the flesh and the devil, of course, not only Demas, oh, well, what happened to Demas? Deserted me and went to, in this, play, in this case, to Thessalonica, and in Crescens to Galatia, and in Titus to Dalmatia. They're all enamored of the present world. Is that not true today? Just mention of Catholics. The majority are unchurched, isn't it? Just mention of Catholics, 70 to 75 percent are not with us at the heart of the Eucharist and the day of the Lord. Those are what we call, they do not believe in Jesus and body and blood, soul, and divinity, the real presence of Jesus. And of those who come, 60% doubt that the Eucharist is Jesus and Jesus is the Eucharist. And it is Jesus the Christ. This is not a cookie bread I was once asked when I was at one of the hospitals here by one of the chaplains. Not a Catholic chaplain, of course, Father. Did you bring a cookie bread? Cookie bread. The Eucharist is a cookie bread. The question was not, did you bring Jesus with you? This was the world before, as it was then, this is the world now. What is new? Very, very important. God or nothing. We just celebrated the uh, Santa Teresa de Avila. She said, solo Dios, basta. And then St. Paul continued, Luke is the only one with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is helpful to me in the ministry. Wow, how so few. How true what Jesus says. And this was put place there in one of the ministry uh, tables yesterday. Uh, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So, Luke is the only one with me. Get Mark and bring him with you. He is helpful. Only very, very few helpful in the ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak. Very, very human. Bring the cloak I left with Carpus in cross. Meaning he did not have much clothes because he has to ask for his cloak that he left. And of course, the papyrus rolls in some apartments, meaning the documents he wrote on these materials. And then what happens in this ministry? What happens in the church, meaning it's not just some 2,000 years back now. Put this in the context now. Alexander the copper myth, or the copper smith, did not did me a great deal of harm. 
so many things, not so many things, so many people are doing much harm to the church, not only outside but within. The enemy is not just outside, the enemy is within. Who are they? Well, Jesus says, read the signs of the times. And you will know. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds, of course. You, be on your guard against him. Well, be on your guard against people who harm the church outside and who harm the church within. Can we challenge them? Right, yes. Example, St. Paul. He challenged Peter, the first pope. And he said, I challenged Kephas, Peter, to his face because he was wrong. So it's not just because you are lay, you're going to challenge the priest, you can. If the priest is wrong, why not? And those are the rest in the leadership of the church. You're a priest, you're a king, and you are a prophet by virtue of your being baptized. And so on and so forth. You too be on your guard against him or anyone for he has strongly resisted our preaching. So many ways of resisting the preaching. We are against those who are preaching. We are not there when somebody is preaching and we are just out of the way. And then come like wolves trying to devour the lambs. And the wolves as other passages of scripture says they are like roaring lions. Seeking us to devour. Who are those? The demons. They are demons. Why not demons? Because demons have only one goal purpose, direction, to destroy. So when we say that's demonic, because it is destructive. First, At my first defense, no one appeared on my behalf. Imagine. In his defense, as he defended the faith, but everyone deserted me. Then he says, may it not be held against me. Of course it will be held against them. As we hear Ignorance of the law excuses no one. The ignorance of the scripture is ignorance of Christ. And therefore, what happens? There will be, in the end, accountability. There is what we call the judgment. The moment of judgment. Whether we belong to the ghost or belong to the sheep. But the Lord stood by me and gave me your strength and give me strength. Is it not what in the great commissioning in Matthew 20, 28? I'm sending you teach everything I have taught you and then behold I am with you till the end of the age. And this is our strength. Where perhaps we are deserted. Perhaps we are alone. Perhaps there are only two or three gathered in my name. The church is not filled up. But then Jesus says, Where there are two or three gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them. And the devil thought to St. John Mary Vianney. The devil said, there are two or three people like you. 
BNA. My kingdom will crumble and fall. That's how a part of this being union with God is. Hair trembles. No wonder why we have a price. Las puertas del infierno non prevalecerán. What's that? The gates of hell shall not prevail. So, we have this. The kingdom, to raise a uh, response, the kingdom, um, or your pray, your friends make known, Lord, the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Let us be friends of the Lord and making glorious the splendor of his reign because either we are for God or we are against God. Please rise. We continue to pray for the conversion of Pope Francis and all cardinals, bishops, priests, deacons, religious men and women, the lay faithful. The conversion, the ongoing conversion day after day into union with Christ. So that their spirit will become God's spirit, the spirit of Jesus. As everyone is sent for his mission. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord. For peace in the world, for, for peace that comes from the Lord, for peace in our hearts, in our home, and all our loved ones. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord pray. Again, for those who are sick in whatever form of illness or ailment, that the trials and pains and difficulties and sufferings will not bring them to the moment or moments of losing hope, but be one in the redemptive sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. For this we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the faithful departed for their eternal rest. For them we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the eternal rest of um, Guadalupe uh, El Garcia, her death anniversary for her eternal rest. For her, we pray to the Lord. Lord we and we pray for an end to apostasy in the church, for unity and strength in the family. We pray for what is called the sealed, sealed and synodality that this will bring conversion and spiritual renewal and union and people truly one in union with God that this will bring salvation of souls and not just the way of a church adapting or adjusting to the way or the ways of the, 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 Lord, the world for this we pray to the Lord. We raise to God all our intentions in this holy sacrifice in the Mass. For this we pray to the Lord. All these heavenly Father we ask to Christ our Lord.
Blessed is the Lord, God of all our creation. For three things we have received. The wide way of the reading, through the divine, work of the is to become our spirit.
Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant their peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. On your day, Pitolus Picata Mundi, Miserere
The Lord sent our disciples to proclaim throughout the lands the kingdom of God is at hand for you. Amen.